So where are you right now? I am currently in San Antonio. Is it? It's not your, that's not your regular city though, is it? Uh, technically I'm born in Amarillo, raised in okay. kind of everywhere. I moved a lot when I grew up and just kept moving for my work. So every couple months I'll move wherever the records are located, so. Oh gosh. So that's what you do for a living then? Yes. Now, how did you get this? How did you get the job to do this? Well, um, I have the last name of my maternal kidnapped second great grandfather, who isn't even a Mead. He's actually a Kathy. And just researching my own family tree, I just got so good and experienced at it that other people in the local genealogy societies, they're like, hey, can you do my my ancestry? You know, here here's a hundred bucks, you know, for an hour, go fetch this or that. And it just kind of grew from there. I see. Have you received the first ESQ at this point? I have. And I just want to tell you that I absolutely adore it. Love it. Good. Love it. But this one right here is my favorite. <laughs> why is that? Tell me why. Because of what you put in it, this back here helped me figure out where that third Beach Boys cartoon is. Dean Lawrence looks like Rod, Rowdy Roddy Piper, doesn't he, in that picture? Oh, the Mike and Dean, from the Mike and Dean art. Mm hmm okay. And that Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling, duh, that's where I've seen that animation style before. So I went um, and I talked to Sony and they're like, we have no record of this because Sony, are, they're the ones who got Columbia television pictures. And I thought, you know, if it went and it was owned something by Columbia with the Beach Boys that Sony would have it. Sony completely denies that. I think Wild Brain has it because um, Deke got bought out by Cookie Jar Entertainment, which got bought out by Wild Brain. So I, I've sent them a message. I haven't heard back from them yet. But I need to find that third cartoon because that's definitely it. I, like that had just been sitting in the back of my head. I've just been thinking about that. Where have I seen that animation style? I know that style. Where? Where is it? So thank you for that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> sure. Um, gosh, I was going to tell you. So, uh, so what did what did so I did send. So you got the physical magazine, and then you got. I don't think you have the summer edition yet. Um, are you, it okay. wouldn't make sense that you would because of when you started your subscription. Yeah, no, nope, just the fall one. So the the actually, if you were to ask, if you were to do the back order on the uh, mm -hmm. back order on the um, the summer one, the summer edition is all about the '85 album and continues everything that's in the fall edition. I didn't have everything that was in the fall edition in time to uh, put out. At that. Ah. So everything that's in the fall edition, I would have preferred had come first because of the content that's in the summer edition fits better. Oh, as so I'll be reading part. it correctly then. Y that's yeah. That's great. And yeah. then I have these, and then I have these two, which are, oh, you know, right. for the first pictures. Couldn't well, resist. That, that sunflower edition was, was fun to put together. Mutton yeah. chops. I love it. <laughs> Mutton chops. So I'm was, waiting for that to make a comeback. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm sure somebody somewhere has got him. Um, but so is Bruce your favorite member then? Bruce is definitely my favorite. And why The only way that is, this issue could get any cuter is if you had pictures of Bruce with kittens. You know, I just, I love it. Like we've got Bruce wet, Bruce dry, Bruce partially submerged, you know? It's just oh, okay. <laughs> mustaches and just adorable. Love it. Well, what is it about Bruce that you like? I mean, well, I was a Manolo or... fan first, and then oh, I had to find out who I wrote the song. So because Manolo didn't write it, ah, oh, there's Bruce Johnson, and I didn't get into the Beach Boys until much later because I just. <laughs> how long have you? Been, how long? Have, when did? When did you get into the Beach Boys? I mean, I guess technically my first experience with them was the Muppets. I mean. I was born in '90s, so. What what did they do? What project did they do with the Muppets? I'm not remembering. The Muppets sang Kokomo. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yes, and me and all my siblings, we got this little VHS tape, and we recorded over it, you know, on live TV, and we played that thing into the dirt. 
that I that I have because I have like five quick questions oh, just for you, which you would probably know. I need to know what years the Beach Boys were with CBS in Columbia. Okay, they were with uh, CBS in Columbia beginning. Um, the first album they released was probably Dennis's solo album, Pacific Ocean Blue, which was in 1977. But they were yeah. still under contract with Warner Reprise. Their last yeah. Warner Reprise record was MIU. And that was in 78. I love MIU. Oh, wait till you, wait till you see the issues of ESQ that are coming. Oh my Lord. Whew. I'm looking forward to At least two issues that are spanning the whole Mike Love, MIU, wow. Love Songs, Ron Outback, Charles Lloyd, Mike Love, Love Songs thing. It's going to take up at least two issues. I got, I've interviewed people I didn't even know had anything to anything to do with anything. <laughs> well, I love contrast. it. I, and like all of Mike's stuff, totally underrated. He gets so much hate in the Beach Boys fandom. And I thought he was just very wonderful, upfront, very blunt, nothing to hide, very straightforward man. I, I appreciate Mike very much. Um, don't I, I understand where uh, knowing history, the history of the group that I, as I do, I understand why some people feel the way they do. But I, I think it's it's been a preventative. Uh, it prevents them from really truly enjoying the music. It seems to me that they're just not enjoying you know because i don't because everyone falls in love and discovers the beach boys at different intervals in their lives mm -hmm. typically it's when we're younger regardless of how, what our current age is it's we typically discover them when we're young ish um and that's mostly true with everyone um that i've ever come across regardless of whether they discovered them in 1970 1980 whatever year it is um and a lot of people have their hard time wrapping their minds around you know, the idea that John Stamos is good for the group. And I and I will tell anybody who says anything against that, I'll say, you're, you're not really looking at what's going on. If you don't- I love seeing Stamos. Stamos. He was great. And John Bolton too. Well, John, Bolton is, John Bolton's a, a great addition to the live touring band. Absolutely. He did. He was a guest star on one of the Zooms. Um, oh. that'll, that'll be posted soon. He's not today's special guest star, but I, I think since you're a researcher, you'll enjoy our special guest when they, when they come on. Um, I'm very curious to know who it is. You said it was a he. Yes, so. I did say it was a he. <laughs> hmm. uh, okay. Just want to check something. So, and then the, this, so there's, uh, I don't have the word with me, but I know what it is. So I, one of the things I've done in VIP is the special guest is one. Uh, the other thing is I do, um, a, a word that it's an everyday word. Now, normally from when I do my Zooms from home, I have the envelope to show people. I don't have that to show you because it's at home. Um, but I wrote an everyday word uh, on the envelope. I changed it. it. It was pine cone and no one got it. So if you happen to say the everyday word that's on the envelope at home, then you win a very historic, like rare, one of a kind Beach Boys artifact um huh. so that's okay and i got the idea you can look at it later on youtube i'm a big marx brothers fan uh, oh. and they were do you know who they were uh-huh okay groucho marx had a television show after the, the brothers stopped doing their movies and it was called you bet your life and he would have contestants on and if they said the word the duck would drop down from the ceiling holding the word and they, i think they won money or something but that's where the idea came from so um, I'm not giving away money, <laughs> but uh, a collectible Beach Boys is, you know, uh, artifact. Uh, is... Well, I mean, if the previous word was pine cone, like, are you just talking about outside words like daisies and trees? Can I just cheat? You can guess. You can guess. No, I went a different direction. I went. I mean, I no one else has guessed it yet. Why can't I just cheat? <laughs> you can guess. One, one, one fellow was, it was funny. He said, okay, I'm going to start reading out of the dictionary. <laughs> um, of course, you know, but you know, again, it's just an everyday word and, uh, yeah, that's all I could tell you. I'm, I don't want to, I, I can't, uh, it's not, it wouldn't be fair for me to give you a hint or anything. Um, oh. but, if you're Marx, but if you know who the Marx brothers are and you're a Marx brothers fan and have seen any of their movies, 
might be a word that was in, in there. Not in a title of a movie, but it's in a specific scene. Um, so you really have to know their movies. Um, so, uh, so what did you like about the, uh, the brand new issue that you got? That, you know, what did you- oh, The very, very latest issue? Yes. This one. Yes. More Bruce. Oh. That's, that, that's my favorite part. Bruce with the cute little Lacoste gear on his sweater. Oh, yeah. I'm look. all about the pictures, okay? okay? ESQ has what girls want, which is more pictures of Bruce Johnston. Oh. I'm happy about this. This is a great issue. Oh man, Bruce better be strapped in when he meets you. <laughs> I met him three times oh, and I didn't ask him, him the, what I needed to ask him. He just, he cheat coded me. You don't understand. Okay, the first day I was in Lubbock at the Buddy Holly Hall and they had a last minute email thing. Oh, you know, pay a hundred bucks. You get to meet Bruce Johnson, Mike Love and John Stamos. Get your picture with them, whatever, right? Meet and greet. We go, Bruce doesn't turn up to it. But the first words out of Mike's mouth when I meet him for the first time are, oh, you must be a Bruce fan because I'm sitting front row directly in front of Bruce for that show, first one. And then I saw the second show later in the day. I went to both of them, but I was like three, row three. We well, got to meet Stamos then, right? I did. I, I Stamos, the girls who went in front of me, oh my God, just, oh, oh, John Stamos, John Stamos. And like one had him on her shirt and he was just so fan friendly and just taking pictures with them. And I saw the, the gal posted it on Twitter later and she was so happy and that just, it really made her day. And later um, at the VIP with Mike Love that night, there was this woman who had a, a health struggle and she, she spoke to him about that. And just the way that he related to her and spoke to her gently and listened to her problem and tried to give her advice, like, that speaks very kindly to Mike's character. And, you know, sometimes it's not what you're saying or how you're interacting with someone. It's, it's watching how they interact with other people. You can learn a lot by just watching someone. Oh, uh, but anyway, back to Bruce. I actually met him in the lobby. He, he approached me, he's like, why are you dressed like that? Cause I was, you know, wearing my blue dirndl. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, you know, I'm Hungarian. He's like, really? I'm like, you know, um, my guy, Shamata Kaiba you know, I'm Hungarian American. And he's like, you know, I dated Zsa Zsa Gabor's daughter, right? I was like, no, I didn't know that. And he's like, do you, do you know who Zsa Zsa Gabor is? I'm like, yes, very famous Hungarian actress, probably the most famous one to ever come out of Hungary. He's like, and he was just so cute and he walked off again. And because, I mean, I was watching him walk out to the lobby. I think he was doing some sign books or something, putting them on the table and I was trying to get the behind you of Bruce and just, you know, stay off in the corner, mind my business. But I was not expecting him to, you know, come up to me and ask me because I had already turned. I was speaking to this other woman. And she's like, oh, hey, you know, there you go. Bruce is behind you, you know, so wasn't expecting that. And I was like, you know, I'll see you later, thinking I'll see him at meet and greet. Didn't get to see him. <laughs> I drive all the way back from uh, Lubbock, back to Amarillo, take the 5 a.m. flight out to get down to San Antonio, because I'd already had tickets to see my ex-step-grandfather. I mean, we're not related by blood or marriage or anything anymore, but he's just a really nice guy, and I come, we keep each other company. He couldn't have any children of his own, so. Oh, yeah, looks like it's, we it's, it's nice. Cool, looks like we may have and, a special guest. Oh. Okay, here we go. I wonder who it is. I don't know. Do they pop up on the little? They they will in a sec. Yeah, they're just they're connecting. Oh. Got it. Got it. Hi. Hi, uh, Carly Mignot. This is Catherine this Mead. Is Hi. Catherine B. Mead. 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 All right. Hi, Catherine. Hi. How are Hi. you? I am fabulous. How That's are you? Great. You, you look fabulous. Um, Hi. fabulous. <laughs> A little bit under, a little, you know, side of thing, but, you know, not bad. <laughs> if you look at the new issue of uh, ESQ, Carly's oh, yeah. ad for his brand new book is oh. uh, right inside there. Yep. I think on the inside front cover. Oh, that's the front cover, yep. 
Yep, there it oh, is. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yes, I haven't read this Are yet, you? but I'm looking forward to it. It's a great book. It's it's really interesting. Um, Carly was spending all that time with Dennis. Fabulous. Yes. Yes. How are your copy, by the way, that I got to send to you? Uh, yeah. 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 Thank you. So Carly's been doing a book. He's he did a little bit of a book tour, um, and he's uh, you know it's an exciting it's really a, an exciting time. And it's his his book is broken down. Uh, it's fascinating the way he's broken down the chapters. He's using different tarot cards as as oh. yeah. It's really cool to kind of take you through his life and take you and you know through his music career and how he got you know the different elements and passages of time where you know he went from one thing to the other and uh Catherine let me ask you how familiar are you with Dennis uh, Wilson's work from the bamboo album the which was I am not familiar with it at all I'm just at the point where I'm trying to put together the timeline of where all of them were okay at certain periods of time between say 1977 to 1982 gotcha um, well, after Pacific Ocean Blue, Dennis was, he never stopped writing. He, he was writing, they decided, okay, we're going to call this Pacific Ocean Blue and put it out. But Dennis was still writing. He, he didn't ever stop writing music. Um, and Carly uh, ended up writing a number of really wonderful songs with Dennis uh, that were supposed to be for the next Dennis album that was oh. called Bamboo. And you can actually get it. Um, oh. uh, I don't know if it's on streaming services, actually, uh, uh, but it came out in 2008 as a Sony Legacy package. And I had the, the privilege of working on liner notes on that project with uh, John Stebbins. And uh, Carly wrote, uh, Carly, you're going to have to help me here. I know. Uh, what's the Moonlight? Uh, um, uh, what are the titles you wrote with Dennis for Bamboo? Yeah, under, under, under the moonlight. Under the moonlight. But let let me uh, clarify something, which is is not. I mean, it's just not happening here. It's like it, it happens everywhere because the tendency is to put the weight on that side. Uh, Dennis and I didn't write anything together. The, these are all songs that I wrote that I had written. Uh, most of them before I met Dennis. Mm -hmm. Uh, uh, for example, um, it's not too late. I wrote in 1968 in New York, even before I went to LA, before I met the Beach Boys. Um, the other ones, it was around the time I I met him. I, I was on and off, you know, the first few years, because the first I I met him uh, socially in 1969 at Brian's house with Jack Riley, who was my roommate, and. Uh, and I was asked to go on a tour early on uh, as a percussionist, which is what they needed. They they didn't even have a clue I played keyboard or a piano. <laughs> so that came later. That came later. That They became aware of that during a rehearsal in, in New York. We were rehearsing in a loft and you know, Alan, and Alan they, they went out to get some lunch. When they came back, I was jamming with the with the horn players, jazz. So so Carl asked me, hey, if you can play that sophisticated music, what can you do? I mean, uh, we can, uh, you know, can you do for us? I mean, could you? Because he saw that I could play piano. So uh, you know, then then I, I Carl asked me, you know, after uh, uh, Daryl left, he had me on cue. Okay. Okay. For the for the position, but the uh, the uh, I went off a little bit. The, the the songs I wrote and, and it, it's often thought that uh, Dennis co-wrote some of them, but no, that's that's not. I mean, I I, I wish it had been that way, but it wasn't that way. Yeah, I, you know, I, to, I didn't, to some extent. I didn't correctly phrase that. Sorry. Right. right. Sorry. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, I mean, that that's like that's a, it's a common uh, misconception about uh, those four songs in Bamboo. Which are uh, under the moonlight, constant companion, it's not too late, and all alone. Uh, the only one I wrote in collaboration was uh, constant companion, which I I wrote with 
um, a fellow by the name of Rax Baker, who passed away long ago. Yeah. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. Yeah. Uh, Catherine, you would love It's Not Too Late. Well, all the songs are, are wonderful, but It's Not Too Late is great because uh, Carl sings with Dennis. Oh, man. And it's, There's no such thing as a bad Beach Boys song. Well, that's true. That's fair. <laughs> but, Especially in collaboration with Dennis and Carl at a time when they were like, they were at odds with each other, which had just come down from a, from the, uh, uh, I think that was, things were hot then. Things were like, you know, there, there was a lot of tension within the band and, and even Carl and Dennis weren't talking at that point, which is a very, very, very rare thing. And I, I really wanted Carl to do that part. And I called him and he came. And the first day they did, they, they like hawk forever. At, you know, in back alley of the studio, brother's studio. They just hog and cried and, you know, that was it. And then Carl did that chorus, which is, it won't, it won't be long. It's not too late. It won't be long. It won't be long, which is incredible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It must be nice to have that, you know, close sibling relationship. I mean, but I can see, you know, brothers getting just sick of each other, being with each other day in and day out and on the road and, you know. I, I'm in the middle of three mm -hmm. and uh, I've never toured with my brothers. I can't even imagine it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I can tell you, it's yeah, it's a very easy thing for siblings to trigger one another and to, you know, you know, have differences of thought and opinions and ways of doing things for sure. I'm one of well, 14 half siblings, so. Oh, gosh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's quite a lot of 14? us. 14? Do you say 14? 14. Oh, that is, that's a, that's a lot. <laughs> yeah, my daddy was a tomcat. <laughs> <laughs> well, he was prolific. <laughs> Very. The ladies loved him and he loved him right back. Oh, that's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. <laughs> well, <sighs> you, what, what you said about the, the brothers, I mean, the, the curious thing is that Carl Dennis and Brian, they, they didn't fight a lot or, it, you know, they, 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 they love each other and they, they care for each other. They really did throughout. I mean, they, they had all their nemesis, you know, within the family, as we all know, but not you know, among themselves, they, they were very, very cool with each other and they appreciated each other. You know, and it, it's interesting to think about that because I have a more close relationship with my first cousins than I do with any of my half siblings. So I got like the exact opposite of the Beach Boy treatment there. That's right. <laughs> I yeah. just. I think about poor Mike Love and all the grief he gets, and I just wonder if you know what has he ever really done to warrant it. Well, he some there was something he did, and there's something Dennis did, but you, I, I can't give it away. You, it's, it's like a, it's like a punch in the, in the book. Oh, well, I'll have to get it. I'll have to read it. That's right. Well, I, <laughs> I got it from the horse's mouth. I, I asked that question to each one of them individually. At, at different decades, you know, different times. I was waiting, waiting, waiting to, I, I wanted to know, I really wanted to know because because I lived it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But well, Catherine, is there anything that you'd like to ask Carly about his time in the group or his uh, musicianship or friendships? Now his, his time in the group, what time frame is this for reference? Okay, the, the the full time is sixty nine through eighty one. I left oh. in nineteen eighty one. Oh, um, do you know if Dennis or Mike were ever in Orlando between nineteen eighty and nineteen eighty one? Sure, I remember when Orlando was like. I, all I remember is that like a lot of streets that weren't paved. Orlando was like in in his infancy. All right, so. I, I need to find that. I think um, there's this other Beach Boy fellow on YouTube, Giggins. He yeah. he mentioned um, this book that has like a day by day timeline of the Beach Boys in it. I I need to find that book and I think you're thinking of Keith Badman's book. Um, 
Keith, uh, John Stebbins and Ian Rustin did one, but I think that's more focused on their uh, appear. Yeah, that's their concert appearances. That may be the better one. Uh, Keith Badman did one, but uh, from what I, I have both books, uh, Keith's book has more mistakes um, in it, which are bound to happen because it's it's you have to kind of do these things and pull these information together so that other people can look at the information you pulled together. Hopefully there aren't mistakes, but in Keith's book, there, there are a number of mistakes. And then there's also, as I said, John Stebbins and Ian Rustin did a book together. And that that also might be a good. And But there's also Andrew Doe's Bellagio website. And that's got shows and sessions listed online and that's easy to access. If you were to go to the uh, ESQ website. With the, uh, the little uh, QR code and what is this about Bruce Johnson and a, a ski and surf band? What? Oh, I, oh, I, <laughs> There's I, like I, a list of everything that, that they've produced. And oh, okay. Yes, I have questions. Yes. Well, there's lots <laughs> of stuff out there for sure. Like so much I'm not even aware of yet. Like apparently <laughs> this is a long history. That's the thing about the Beach Boys. We, you know, as soon as you, th you you think you're going and you're gonna, you're really just trying to find out one thing. And as soon as you find out the one thing, it's like as soon as you get one answer, you have ten to twenty more questions. Then once you find out the one answer, and then you find out maybe ten of the twenty questions. And each time you find out a new answer, you have five to ten more questions. Each time you find something out, and it's it's kind of like that. It's just you know the tentacles reach far and wide. That's like a tree. With Carly's story. It's like a tree. You yeah. know, it just yeah. branches in so many different directions. I was just with, uh, are you from, do you know who uh, John, uh, no, um, da, da, da. Dan uh, Eddington is, Addington? I is? am not Dan familiar Addington, with yeah, I'm, I'm familiar with Dan Addington, yes. Yeah, in Chicago. Yes. Uh, some, some time ago, he took interest in, uh, I think he facilitated one of the first uh, bootlegs or something like that on Dennis Wilson when there wasn't anything. Mm -hmm. And he just did it for fun and his friends and he got on demand. And and he has a uh, gallery in Chicago because he's an artist and plus he has uh, other artists. Uh, uh, he represents other artists. And I, I just met him for the first time. I knew him. <clears throat> he had reached out to me like, many decades ago regarding some uh, Dennis stuff and we became friends you know and over time we uh, we uh, we knew each other from uh, Facebook and all that stuff and I we finally met for the first time just now on this tour the last leg of the tour where I was uh, in Chicago before I ended up in New York again and uh, I went to visit this gallery we had you know we, we have a, a quick breakfast and we, we chatted for a while and it was he was really interested. He he had uh, he had access to a lot of the stuff that 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 wasn't even. I mean, it just it wasn't on the map. But that, that's a branch, you know. It's like the the tree you're talking about. Uh, I mean, ask John Stebbing, and and you get a lot more answers and a lot more questions too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he's just one of many people that that had. So many people that have something to do with the beach boards in, in one way or another. Oh, and the, the reason I, I bring them up is because, um, you know, I do art, I paint also. And I, I like to reach out to, in, on that huge tree, anyone who's an artist, because I uh, I mentioned to Dan that maybe he, he can do a gallery, a uh, presentation of art of, from people that have been part of the Beach Boys or related to the Beach Boys somehow, or they've been on tour with it, because there's been so many people. And uh, that would be interesting, I I think. I mean, and, you know, Steve Kalanish is one, you know, he's yeah, an artist. He's great. Yeah. And uh, he wrote stories. And so there must be other, there must be other people out there who are also artists that might uh, contact you or me and uh, and we can get this together with, with Anne. Yeah, that'd be that'd be something. Yeah, I know he. Yeah, he's. Yeah, he was one of the first ones who had a website dedicated to Dennis. That's right. Many, many years, over twenty years ago. Yeah, yeah. He he was, 
big big fan of Dennis. Yeah, he still is. Yeah, Dennis's music is right. just one of a kind. Um, right. Just one. And that's that's something I tried to do, Carly, in the last uh, couple of editions of Endless Summer Quarterly. I you know was talking about the 84, 85 timeline, but I made it a specific point to ask Jerry Schilling in the summer edition, I asked Jerry Schilling about how was the group reacting to Dennis's passing? You know, I kind of started there because it was important to me to kind of set up in people's minds and in their hearts where the Beach Boys were as a group, where they were musically and intellectually and emotionally right? It, not just as men in their 30s or 40s or whatever the age they were, 30s in, in 84, um, but the passing of a significant member of their group. So, and, and even in the fall edition, I included a, a photo of Dennis because I asked Spencer Proffer, uh, producer Spencer Proffer about Dennis, uh, you know, how his perspective of how the group was without Dennis being in the group. And it, and it's because I don't want Dennis to be, it's very important to me to keep Dennis in the conversation. Yeah, the, to me it was awkward. Um, and I observed how, uh, okay, we're going on without Dennis. And, and it, it I, I felt the, I felt the void. I mean, I, I mean, I wasn't with, I wasn't touring anymore, but right. But my observation and, you know, because I, I was still friends with Carl and I, you know, on occasionally I, I you know, I, I still hung out a little bit. But it was it was very, very weird for me. Just the idea of going on without Dennis, is, it was, uh, I don't know, I, I it's hard to conceive. It, w it was Jerry Schilling who gave me the uh, the news. And that that was tragic. That was uh, even though I knew that was that was gonna come. It was a matter of like when the tension was there. But it was it was a huge deal, big big deal. Yeah, I can tell you still feel Dennis. Yeah. Oh, definitely. When I recorded uh, in my soul at uh, in 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 Nashville. At Fred Vale's studio at Treasure Isle, mm -hmm. I I felt him when I was sing when I was singing, I was I had him like right there with me, and I mean I tears were flowing and everything. I mean, when I was singing, it was uh, you know because I it had so much to do with him. You know that album, I I did it because of what we did. I I wanted to because I I wasn't. You know, it, it's really easy to uh, overlook and exclude someone who's passed. Yes. There's no longer in the picture. Then you do what you can do. But that was Dennis and I project. I mean, clearly, uh, Dennis had originally asked me to be the producer. And I said, no, Dennis, we are going to be co-producers. Because, you know, I knew how close he was to, to the project. So we ended up co-producing. But then for other people to take on the project and and I wasn't dead, I was alive. And uh, you know, there was internet, there was there were ways. I was in Puerto Rico, I left LA. So uh, I suppose like uh the others, you know, the, the people that grabbed the project, they assumed that I wasn't aware that I didn't care or that it, it didn't matter, but it mattered to me. And that's why I made the album uh, In My Soul, which which has all the songs that were destined to uh, uh, Bamboo. Mm -hmm. And it, it also has the four, you know, the four pillars of Bamboo, which are like uh, the, the um, It's Not Too Late, to All Alone, or Constant Companion, Under the Moonlight. Uh, so I just wanted... Uh, well, because it got mixed without me, it got you know, it it I knew there was a better way to do it also, mm -hmm. and I wanted to show that, you know. So so I did it the way I would do it. The only thing that was missing was his vocals. See, and then then but when I did the vocals, that's when I, I had his presence and he's like, you know, so close to me, like you say, he was yeah. he was there. He was there. 
Well, it showed. It, Catherine, I, I highly recommend that album too. It's called In My Soul. And it's a kind of a sepia toned album art. Uh, it's on CD. Is it on, Carly, is it available on streaming services as well? Oh, yeah. Yes, I believe it is. It's, uh, I think I, uh, I access it on uh, Spotify. Okay. This should be in the other streaming services as well. It's it's really good, Catherine. It's I highly recommend it. There is like literally just there's probably well over a thousand hours of Beach Boy songs you can listen to all the different variants of them. Just yeah, oh, it's, it's a the, lot. It's, it's just it a whole lot of information overload, <laughs> but it's great because you know unlike the people you know before who are earlier Beach Boy fans, they had to wait. Like every new album was like, oh, when's it going to come out? And or you know, I have to go down to the record store and wait. I missed that. I missed they don't that. Sell I don't <laughs> like I you missed, know, takes I missed, back I in missed, the day. I miss that so much. I've, I've been talking. I've had other Zoom conversations with people about, don't you miss having to get on your bike or get in your car or whatever it was to go to your favorite music store? Oh, look at that! Oh, I just got the Joni Mitchell's new album. I, look at that! Oh. I just got it for my birthday from my wife. Just oh, like just, happy birthday! Aww, that's cute. <laughs> it's wonderful. I can't wait to hear it. I, I just have was, to... I, yeah, I, go ahead. I just went shopping at a used record store today. Really? Yeah, I just. I oh, they're so much fun. Job. They What's are that? so much fun. Yeah, I'm, they are. I'm, I'm trying to think if, like, we'll talk if I can see uh, a um, in my soul CD or something around. I think there's one around somewhere. And no, that's not it. And I mean, I, I don't want to stop the yeah. show. Oh, that's but, okay. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll keep looking. I'll, there must be one. What do you, what you got on your walls there? It looks like you got a lot of great, uh, cool artifact like stuff framed on your walls, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, that's my daughter by a very famous artist, uh, oh Rafael Reyes. Another great artist there, other artist. Uh, uh, that's my wife. I painted that one. Oh my gosh! Oh wow! Uh, it's a lot of stuff. I have a, a lot of friend, friend oh, artists. Carly, that, let me ask you something. I got to make a special request because all my other zooms that I've done, nobody's had a piano in the room. Ah, so I'm oh, wondering. I'm wondering. Books. <laughs> and look at the books too. Look at all the books. I'm wondering yeah. if we could get a special request and have you play play something for us. Sure. This is the book here. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, sure. I, I can do that. We <laughs> haven't done that. This this is gonna be so cool. I'm so glad you got up and I saw the piano. <laughs> yeah, it's out of tune. I I'm still looking for it to see if I can find that uh, oh, in my soul. Yeah. Yeah, let me think of I, I think I I should have. Oh, look at, look all at these these. these. Whoa. <laughs> I should have one somewhere. I would somewhere. hope so. But, but I know it's like a, uh, in my soul, where are you? I just love that y'all have all of this stuff in, in your backgrounds, in your videos, because, you know, when I'm in it. my office, I'm the same way. It's just like, you have all this, this walls of materials and people are like, where is anything? Oh, I, I, I lost the, uh, the video. Where is it? Oh no, I lost David too, but I can hear you. I'm I'm still here. Oh, Maybe. there you are. I'm You're here. back. Oh, oh there, oh, there it is. Yeah. Okay, so look, look what I found. Let me see if I can find there it is. light in here. Ah. Let me see. Uh huh. Oh wow. Really oh, good. It's it. really good. And in even my soul. Even if you found. Even if you found that album either physically or on Spotify or something, I still would recommend that you seek out the Dennis Wilson Bamboo music. Uh, oh. some, of, some of the songs are the same, but to hear to hear the you know Dennis's uh, vocals, it, they're, they're both worth having. I wanted to yeah. ask you, what is the best version of Cabin Essence in your opinion? Oh, of what? In mine. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, go ahead. Because I was watching your previous videos, um, oh, David. Kevin Essence is and my favorite song. You mentioned song. that being True. your absolute favorite, and I've never heard it, so I went and oh, from the to Smile it. Sessions box set. From Good to In mono, in mono, yeah. Cabin Essence, Good. great. 
There's a it song. Is. I think it's actually on the on the. Uh, this on in my soul. I think there's a this is a song here called uh, Lutherisms. Oh. oh. Which is a cappella. So uh, since Carly, do you, Catherine, do you have a request for Carly, a Beach Boys song? Now don't ask her write the songs. I write the songs. Don't do that. No, please don't. <laughs> don't do that. She likes Bruce very much, but don't do that. Maybe maybe ask oh, for yes. a song or, or a... And, and don't ask for Here Comes the Night Disco, please. Yes, okay, not that. <laughs> <laughs> I Actually, wish they play that one live. Um, hmm. any, any Beach Boys song? Well, okay. how about let's narrow it down, because not all Beach Boys songs sound great in piano solo. I think. Okay, Carly, yeah. how about you pick? How about you? Yes. Pick Beach Boys song. How about something from from um, Pet Sounds. Beautiful. Anything. Okay, and this is by arrangement. This is the first time it's going to be heard in public, national. What is it? Uh, <laughs> National <laughs> Public Radio or something. I don't right, know. Right, right. Zoom. Public, National Public, public Zoom. <laughs> yeah. And this is uh, You Still Believe in Me. Ah. Right? You guys. Yeah. But I do like a, a little a tropical, like simple, like little chow, like uh, version, like. Okay. Believe in me. Very nice. My, I, that. I oh, want to record oh. that. I, I want to do it like that. Really simple. Do a music video, and you know, just just release it as uh, just just a, a little arrangement, mm -hmm. like very simple, very minimalist. Yes. Yeah. 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 
Well, thank you for doing that. That's that's uh, of course. It's nice. Yes, thank you. It's I not like one of the. Thank you. It's not one one of the better so, uh, known songs, uh, Kathleen. Catherine. Um, Carly, thank you for your time. Uh, I greatly appreciate it. Well, is there anything, any uh, question, any other questions you had for me? No, just oh yes, actually. Do you think that Bruce will pet play "I Write the Songs" in Spartanburg? I don't know That's, if it's on the potential rotation because he played Disney Girls in San Antonio, and I was so happy. He would be about more it. likely to play Disney Girls. Um, I know. It depends. It, it depends on two things. Mike Mike does the set list every night. Every night. He doesn't say, okay, this is a set list and then goes a week. It's every night he changes it. And it depends on the type of venue they're in. It depends if it's outdoors or indoors. It, you know, so, and, and then Mike likes telling a story with the songs. So if, if, in, if in Don't Worry Baby, it's the guy girl situation and they're in a young romance, then Mike's gonna wanna follow that up with a song that works for the next stage of the romance. So Mike's very, you know, very uh, conscious of the way that he puts together the set list and has the songs laid out. Um, I'm just going to pray for it. That's all I can do. Because, I mean, I got those front row tickets again on Bruce's side, and I'm just, I'm praying, praying for it. Because I've seen Barry Manilow perform it, but I haven't I have seen Bruce Johnson perform it. Barry perform it twice. So a girl can pray, can't she? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, it's a good, well, yeah, you know, and, and maybe you can get, maybe I can get a word back and say, please play, please. And every once in a while, I've seen them joke. Mike will like introduce Bruce and say, and he'll mention that he got Grammy, you know, song of the year for write the songs and Bruce will start to play it and then he'll wave him off and but it's a joke. You know, I've seen that a number of times. You never know. Maybe you, play it. You, you don't know what you'll get, but, uh, but the concerts are, are really good now with John Bolton and, and John. No, I, I mean, I was there for the, the one in San Antonio and Tara Rickert, I hope I'm pronouncing her name correctly. She was the dream maker the entire time because they weren't doing a meet and greet or anything, but I went up to the stage and she gave me a um, little set list paper. And she's like, I don't remember you. I'm like, yes, you know, is Bruce here? Can I get my, you know, picture with Bruce that I paid for back in Lubbock because Bruce didn't turn up to that. She's like, go over, go over there. And I'm with, you know, my ex-grandfather, you know, come on, come on, we're just doing this. And well, she got us backstage and she entered, she put Bruce right in front of me. And she's like, here, she has so many interesting questions and just left us. Before yeah. I can do that, he just goes, have you heard of the weekend? I'm like, yes. He goes, I produced him and just tapped me on the cheek. And I'm just like, that's it. In that moment, every intelligent thought that any question I had was just gone. I was like, oh, and he, he just walks off and I, I, I just lean back on the wall that's got all the autographs on. I'm just like, CPR. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> my grandfather's like, are you okay? Yes, I'm, I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> I will be at least give me a couple of minutes. <laughs> and then I'm just thinking, okay, he went off that direction. There's all these people in the back. There's way too many people for them to, to be meeting. So I know he's trying to get out of the building. You know, I'm thinking about, I'm like, where's he going to go? Mike was around the corner. And around this, uh, the first corner, that's where Bruce has signed his name uh, back on the Majestic. But I didn't see where Mike signed his. Um, so I introduced my grandfather to Mike again. And Mike's like, I'm going to call you about, you know, that thing the previous night. Um so my grandfather meets him, whatever, and then I see Bruce, and he's got um his his uh, his little fingers like this. He's got his uh dry cleaning with him, and he's getting up the stairs. I'm like, okay, come on, we have to go. <laughs> and um, you know, I'm hoping someone stops Bruce, so that way, you know, I can go stop Bruce and work my way up to the rest of that, right? No, and he's just trying, you know, get across the street, get out. I'm like, okay, that's it. You know, don't pound the guy, don't stop him, don't let him get harassed. I'm cool with that. You've had, you got your moment. Good, right? So I walk back and Tara's like, did you get out? I'm like, no, I didn't. She, she goes and she gets Bruce and makes him stop. <laughs> and um, I got I got my picture with Bruce and I was happy about that. And she's like, get in here, Grandpa. And Bruce's like, Grandpa? <laughs> like, who are you calling Grandpa, you know? And, you know, he comes back and 
that says hello and we get the pictures together and it was great but I still couldn't I had three chances to ask Bruce my question and blew all of them so maybe fourth time is the charm I don't know yeah, yeah, there was nothing I could do he cheat coded me man and you can tell like he has like maximum charm he's done that to someone before he knows what he's doing just well, he's been in the industry a very very long time so yeah since 1962 Damn. or one no no even before that even before that so yeah he's been in the, the business a long time and he's he's uh quite quite an uh, incredible musician i know there was just there was nothing i could do at that point <laughs> this wasn't meant to be